Hey, it's your girl Bobby J here, and we are talking about Tyler Perry's The Haves and the Have Not, season eight, episode 16, Trouble Man. Who was a trouble man? I would have to say, let's see, why was a trouble man? And uh, I think Mitch was a troubled man, and Benny was a troubled man. There were a lot of troubled men in this episode. But anyway, let's get started. First, shout out to everybody in my comment section. Shout out to all my subscribers. Thank you for holding my channel down. And if you have not subscribed to my channel as of yet, please take a moment right now and hit the little subscribe button. It should be right here. Hit that subscribe button and, and help my channel grow. And if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video, then hit the little bell next to it and that'll let you know. Now, let's jump right in. This episode started off, I got so many notes, it's ridiculous. But this episode started off with uh, uh, how it ended. Candace is, of course, we knew, dreaming that she sees not only Oscar, but who pops up? Quincy. Okay, yes, she helped kill Quincy because she stabbed him a couple of times with Jeffrey. Erica, she ain't kill Erica. That was Veronica's doing. But she was the one who told Erica to go there and stay with David and try to use him and get some money. And then there was her son. Well, not that she really killed him, but she was the one who wasn't there for him. And her mama wouldn't have been taking care of him if she was doing her job taking care of her own damn child. So, those people showed up in her life that they supposed to are going to, she's going to get what she deserved. They all take a turn. I'm going to get to her first and all that stuff. And she, she woke up with Benny. She, you know, even though she was yelling Benny, I think, in her sleep, he woke her up. So, that was good. And, um... What else was it? Why it fight? Uh, she she the flash. She had these flashbacks. She was seeing all these different things that was happening in the dream. All these different things. I don't know how that she could flashback and see her son getting shot because she wasn't there for that. How she flashback and see Erica getting blown up in the car. She wasn't there for that. So that kind of was like, eh, I don't get that point. But anyway, Benny wakes her up and she doesn't tell him what the dream is about. He asks her what's the dream about. She doesn't want to share. Go figure. You know, maybe that's guilt or whatever. And so then she asks about Mitch and she asks, where has he been? Where has Benny been? Benny said, I've been with that girl. She said, all this time? Yeah, all this time. I'm like, oh, what time? You just woke up. How you even know what time it is, girl? Anyway, what else? Then it switches over to David. David's telling, uh, wife. I don't know why I wrote that there, but okay. David's telling Wyatt about his, um, calling his father because of course Wyatt ended up at the Harrington's house and why he's going to call his father and he's like no he's going to kill me he's going to kill me oh boy he ain't going to kill you and stuff you know so I'm just trying to remember what happened because they start fighting he starts fighting with uh what's the guy Leo and stuff and <laughs> they just all standing there I said why y'all all just standing there watching Madison, Jeff, and, and, and David just standing there while Leo wrestles with him and gets him back to, you know, and whatever. So then De uh, uh, Madison goes and um, says, you know, you need to call. I'm going to call the cops. This is ridiculous. And J David's like, no, I said I'm calling his father. I got this. Sir, no, no, Madison, I got this, you know. But you've been supposed to call the cops before David even got down there. You ain't called them now. Why are you going in your pocket to call the cops again? I, I don't like when I see writing like that because this bothers me and stuff. So he's telling Leo he needs to get some ice on his hand. And Jeffrey seems to be annoyed that he's giving Leo attention and stuff. And Madison's like, what the F? What are you, what's, what's the problem? You know, he said he knows where the kitchen is. He could do it and stuff. And he tells Jeffrey later, I'm doing my job. What's the problem? You know, uh, it was too much. So, um, uh, White is getting, you know, they, uh, they are having a little moment, Jeffrey and Madison and White is like, oh, this is freaking sick, man. Who wants to hear this? Who cares? You know, and, um, um, all of a sudden when all of that's going on, Veronica pulls up. When, I don't know when did uh, Leo go back out there because I thought he was putting ice on his hand. But Leo was back out there by the time Veronica pulls up, you know, and uh, 
she's telling him, he's like, miss, do not come on this property. Do not step one foot on this property. She said, well, tell that bastard I'm out here. He's like, ma'am, I'm telling. She said, okay, okay. And she got that guy in the car. I, do we know his name? I don't recall his name. But it's supposed to be Jeffrey's father, right? Biological father. So he's like, please. She's like, he's like, look, got it. Just tell his ass. Tell the bastard to come out here. So he goes in there and tells David. And Jeffrey's like, oh, no, dad, no, no. He's like, no, I got this. I'm going out there. I'm going with you. What you going to do with him? So all of them go out, Leo, David, and Jeffrey go out there, and they leave Madison with Wyatt. Wyatt ain't attached to the damn chair. He just handcuffed. So I don't know why he not going crazy, why he's sitting there still and acting like there's a problem just because he's handcuffed behind his back. That's how he get out. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. So they go out there, and Veronica tells Jeffrey, this your real daddy. He your real daddy. <laughs> She's like, come on, meet your daddy. You know, you know, I had to pull him out of the strip club, you know. That's the gay, no, I had to pull him out the gay bar. That's what she said. She said, that's probably where you got it from. And the guy apologizes to David. I'm sorry about this. He's like, man, you know, Get the hell out of here. Get your ass out of here. Both of y'all, he's telling them. And then Veronica said, this used to be your daddy's. He, he was your daddy's business partner. And David's like, Veronica, please get out of here. You know, go, leave and stop. Jeffrey, go in the house. Jeffrey, go in the house. And Jeffrey's like, what, dad? What's she talking about? And she said, here, Jeff. Here, Jeffrey, 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 Jeffrey. Here, Jeffrey, Jeffrey. <laughs> Take the DNA results, you know. And stuff and and Jeffrey he's like go go and Jeffrey decided to start walking away but then he turns back around and then I hate his acting sometimes he walk away then he come back and then, and he finally was walking and he's like Veronica you stay away from me and stuff something like that something like, something like you gonna get yours she said what that rent a cop you got looking from following me or whatever and something about you gonna get yours like you gonna die she said yeah like Erica died he said yeah like Erica and Ab What's her name? Gabby Day? Something that uh, Maggie Day? You killed both of them. She said, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. She played just as dumb as she wanted to play. And so that that happened. And they walked into the house. He wouldn't take the um Jeffrey wouldn't take the DNA thing. And he said, You're gonna get yours. I'm telling you, David was pissed. She said, Bitch, I'm Veronica. He's like, he's like I'm Veronica, bitch. You can't kill me. I don't die. She said, you tried. You died, though. I was like, okay. She's like, she got nine lives like Wyatt. Hun, Wyatt don't die for nothing. They done got stabbed, beat, run off the road. There all kind of shit that happened to them. Them two don't die is for real. That's that evilness in them. So, you know, as they go in the house, uh, what happens? That She telling that guy... You know, she's just so disrespectful to the guy who's supposed to be Wyatt's father. Get your ass in the car. What the hell is wrong with you? Look at the way you dressed and all this stuff. Hey, you ain't got no goddamn manners. You don't do it. Girlfriend, look at him. Look at him working it to the car. Jeffrey, he working it. Your daddy working it better than you. He working, working, getting it to the car. He said, oh, who that? Girlfriend there? Hey, girl. Hey, girl. She see Madison at the door. That's Jeffrey girlfriend. Hey, girl. He was like, Veronica, we need to stop that. You stop. So who the, who you start talking to? She's like, who you talking to? You want to walk your ass home? You know, I, I will leave you right here. You have to get home. She said, now shut the hell up and do what I'm telling you to do. You don't, don't talk to me. Don't even talk to me. I mean, she was so nasty to him. And he just stood there as calm. I, I just didn't get it. He don't look like he a black man to take mess. And from the gay guys I know, they don't take shit from nobody. So that was kind of strange for me. But then it goes on to, who is it? That was funny, though. She's like, here, Jeffrey, 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 Jeffrey. I'm sorry, y'all. That was me, but that shit was funny. Here, Jeffrey, 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 Jeffrey. So, so um, what happened next? Um, uh, uh, Jeffrey, no. Okay, this part was stupid. They go into the house and they're fussing about it in front of Leo, in front of Wyatt, in front of Madison. Where's your family privacy and stuff? Y'all arguing about if that's the daddy. Oh, you know your mother. She'll try anything. She won't do anything. Dad, but what was that? She wouldn't go that far. You know your mother would go that far. You know she would. I was like, this don't make no sense. 
in front of everyone. And, and I just thought that was like, eh, stupid. Okay. Then he's like, you're my son and I'm your father. And your mother stoops very low, you know. So Jeffrey didn't believe it, but he got some reservations in his head now. Um, he said, dad, he did kind of look like me. He did, you know. So why is yelling, who the fuck wants to hear this? You know, like, really, Jeffrey? Like, look, you gonna let me sit here like a dog? Jeffrey said, I can't do nothing for you. And yes, you said it, and that's what you, we gonna do. I can't do nothing for you. You don't want to help your damn self. Ain't nothing I could do. You supposed to be my friend. Yeah, well, I can't help you. So, um, what happened? Oh, uh, hold on, you to go, so let, let me sit there. Okay, so Madison and Jeffrey go upstairs. They go upstairs, and Jeffrey's acting all jealous. So Leo looks cute. Is Leo supposed to be gay or something? Why you care about the attention? Madison is a nurse. Nurses pop into, they can't help who they are. And they will always jump in. You didn't care when he was pumping, doing why it's hot, you know, doing CPR to why it. I mean, it's like, he's, oh, well, that didn't happen yet. I'm sorry. But, you know, nurses are who they are. And those good ones, they can't help it but jump into action when something goes down if they're around. It is what it is, Jeffrey. So I don't know why he was getting jealous about that. And they go upstairs and they talking about it. And Leo's cute. And, and Jeffrey's with this. What if I wanted to, you know, more after, you know, after Justin. After being with Justin, I just want to know what a real relationship is like. And, you know, and he started talking about the DNA stuff. And, and, and Madison told him, you know, you could get that doctor. You know, your mother might not be telling the truth. That might be doctor. He's like... Yeah, but I don't know. I'm just thinking about it. He said, well, you can find out by going getting tested with your dad. Oh, no. It would kill him to if I asked him to do it. She said, he said, then don't ask him. Just do it without him. He was like, what? You could do that? Why Jeffrey got a college degree and everything? Act like he's so dumb sometimes. I, I, Y'all got to tell me down in the comment section because he just act dumb sometimes. And he was like, all you have to do is get a toothbrush and a hairbrush. I knew that shit. Now you can go to medical school. No. You know? So, I guess I watch a lot of them DNA shows. You are the daddy. Y'all watch Paternity Court? <laughs> She's like, Paternity Court. The DNA don't lie. That's what she tells them. Oh, anyway. So, um, what else happened? Veronica gets home and she's yelling for Laura. I want my drink. Did you go get my dress? My new dresses? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you got somebody named Mr. DeMarco waiting for you. Okay, send him in. Uh, he's like... All beat up. You look a little beat up. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Was he that big? No, he was all right. I got, you know, did you do it? Yeah, I took care of it, lying ass. I need my money now. He, she said, I'll give it to you within an hour. Within an hour is not that damn long. How many of y'all, if y'all was getting paid thousands of that within an hour? I can wait within an hour. She was like, he said, no, that wasn't the deal. I want my money now. She was like, dude, I didn't know you was going to get it done this quick. You know, what the hell is wrong with you? So she tried to massage him and make him feel good. Does this feel better? It feels like I'm still waiting for my money. I don't know what kind of people you deal with, but I need my money right now. She said, okay, fine. I'll go upstairs and get it. She acted like she walking up the stairs. Then she turned back and grabs her pocketbook. <laughs> she don't trust his ass, finishes her drink and puts it down and walks out. I was like, okay. All right. So, but that was funny when she came back and got him. Then he tries to follow her upstairs and she was like, where the fuck you going? He was like, I'm going with you. She said, no, you not. You're going to sit right here and wait. And so I, I, it seems to me she would have her spidey senses would be tingling because he never act like this in the past. Not one time in the past did he act like this. This time he's acting kind of nervous and stuff. I don't know if she going to pay him and he going to get away with it. I don't know. Then, um, they, it switches over to Mitch. Mitch is trying to talk to Uncle Benny and pleading with him not to hurt um, Benny. Oh, not to hurt um, Benny. Right, right. And he said that uh, Sandy going to do it. Sandy going to hurt him and he going to kill him. And Mitch is like pleading. And he said, let me just call him now. Then. And he's like, no, not in fact, you're not calling him. Give me your cell phone. You out of this one. You going to stay out of this one. And he said, Uncle Philly, you going to make me sit here and wait while he goes off and going off, Benny? You going to make me do that? He said, go ahead. And then the next thing you see, Sandy. Sandy, what the fuck are you still doing here? I'm waiting for such and such. Of course, you know he can't do it by himself. So he had to go get his boys or something like that. And he was like, 
Come on. I want to go and say something. He said, you want to go against me? You'll go against me? And he said, you know I can't do that. He said, no, go ahead and walk out that door and see what happened. I said, oh, man. And he turned over to said, he said, you ain't nothing but a little bitch. You ain't nothing but a little bitch. You all confused, walking around like you hate black people and stuff, acting like you hate black people. And then you going to, um, how did he say that? And, oh, and, but your Rihanna's black. Your girlfriend's black, he said. And he said, that's different. How's that different? She's half black. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Sandy. I don't know where you've been and what world you live in. But in America, you can have an ounce of black in you. And every white person be thinking you black. They don't even care. The cops is like you black. Okay. So, he, she only half black. She don't even want you. Y'all not together. And then Uncle Vinny says, so what if they not together? So what? You know, like, I think I saw, it sounded like he said, Mama Rose is getting used to her and stuff. You see, she don't want to be with you. What do you, how you forcing people to be your girl? It just don't make no damn sense. Anyway. Uh, get up and walk out the door. So, he, Uncle Vinny told um, uh, Mitch to just shut up and don't say nothing else. And then he pleads with him. He said, come on, Uncle Vinny. He pleads with Sandy. Please go do it. Kill him. Make it bloody. You know, I got my nephew here. I got my nephew here pleading for this kid. Make it all bloody as hell. You know, I was like, damn, Vinny, what's up with that? So then it goes to Catherine. Catherine, that's my girl. Catherine crying. She in jail, and they put some chick in the cell with her, and she's like, I'm supposed to be in the cell alone. And and the, the, the police officer, she played her role good. She's like, says who? She said, my attorney. Where the hell you think you are? She's like, I, you know, she said, I think you ought to check with your superiors. She was like, lady, shut up. I said, damn, no. What happened to that black police officer? He done got rid of so many people. And um, she said, well, the girl gets in there, a little thug looking and like, well, I guess we roomies now. And she's like, well, you're going to have to move. We're not supposed to because I'm going to be. She said, bitch, please. I ain't going nowhere. She was like, guard. And Catherine stands up to her. She, Catherine stands up to this chick. And she wasn't backing down. And that's what I like about Catherine. And when the lady came back, the guard came back, she's like, who are you? She's like, look, I am Catherine Cryer. And da 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 And the, 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 the girl behind her, the, the police officer didn't care. She walked off and said, sorry, I'm sorry. Like, too bad for you. And she leaves. And the girl said, oh, you Catherine Cryer? Oh, so you, um, she, what did she say? You know, she said something about, I've been looking for a rich something. You know, to be my bottom chick, bottom bitch. That's what she called her, bottom bitch. I wasn't sure what that means. Y'all going to have to write it in the comment section because I don't know the terminology. Sorry. And she said, um, I'm going to make you mine before the night is over. That's what I'm going to do. She said, and she was like, you touch me and you going to regret it and stuff. And she said, lady, I know you. And she said, um, this whole town knows me. That's Catherine. You, you Catherine cried. That's right. She said, should I know you? Like, who are you? She's like, Diamond. Now, I don't remember who Diamond is. Maybe y'all know. One of y'all know. But I I was racking my brain trying to figure out who this Diamond person is. But if y'all know, let me know. But she said, if you touch me, you are going to regret it. That's what she did tell her. So then it goes to this. This part is so... Uh, Hannah... Hannah drives up. Now, you need to be aware of your surroundings, Hannah, because you spent way too much time talking to that girl, not looking behind your shoulder. She could have been a distraction for somebody to whoop your ass out at night. It's nighttime. First of all, what stupid chick is standing out on a, sitting out on a porch at night with her little baby, ain't even a year old, ain't got no pocketbook and no baby bag? That was a red flag right there, Hannah. You should have been concerned. Why you couldn't sit out there in the damn daytime, honey? What's her name? Tanisha? The hell is Tanisha out at night with a baby, Tyler? How do you do that, TP? You can't do do scripts like that. That don't make no damn sense. So uh, she goes and she says she's looking for Benny. And, and she says, I'm sorry, he no longer lives here and stuff. You know where I can find him? Well, who are you? She's like, who are you? And, and Hannah, I'm shocked. You talked a little bit more and was a little bit too comfortable with her to me. You know, and you're his mom, Hannah, right? She said, Miss Young. 
I was like, check her. Why the hell would you even say Hannah? I would have said you're his mother, Miss Young or something. Since you had to find out, you told him what his last name was. And she said, well, can I have his phone number? And can I call? I'll call him. Hannah said, I'll call him. And what's it about? You mind if I ask what's it about? I just need to talk to him. It's important, you know, that I speak to him. And so the phone rings and Benny's like, oh, nah, man, it's mom on the phone. Candace's like, don't answer, don't answer. He's like, no, she's going to be mad. She's going to be mad. He answers it. And she said she got this Tanisha on the phone. And he started talking to Tanisha, okay. And he's like, I don't know who you are. And she's trying to tell him, yeah, you know, I met him. Um, I met, what did she say? I met you months ago in a club. She said, I mean, it was only one night only. But one night only, one night only is what it is. No, me stop. <laughs> Y'all gonna make me go in a dream, girl. Oh, Lord. So she said, oh. It was only one night, but it happened. And I'm like, I had to find you and find out what your last name was. And I was looking for you. He sorry, but he said, sorry, I don't know what this is. And and she said, Hannah, because Hannah said it first. She said, oh, Lord, when the girl didn't want to talk, she said, is this Benny baby? Lord, it looked just like Benny when he was a baby. Oh, my Lord, he looked just like Benny when he was a baby. Oh, my goodness. Let me act it out. What is it? Oh my goodness, look just like Benny when he look at that baby, look at him. <laughs> Let, me Let me stop. Oh Lord, so she missed. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> so he's like, I'm sorry, but you got the wrong guy. And he was like, no. Hannah was like, give me that phone. Because they start arguing. She take the phone and says, sister, he come home to speak to her. You better get here. And she invites the girl into the house. I still wouldn't invite the girl in the house. I don't care. First of all, I've been up there. Bitch, what you out here in the middle of the night with your baby and no bottle? You ain't got no bottle, no diaper bag, no nothing. What you supposed to do if he his, his he poop on himself or his baby start crying and thirsty? What, you going to pull out a titty? What, what are you doing? That was just dumb. Anyway, then Jim, Jim finally shows up to uh, David's house and he's yelling at Wyatt, calling him an ungrateful prick, little prick and all this stuff. And I'm taking you to rehab and I'm not going with you. And, you know, but meanwhile, he proud of him for breaking out of prison. I mean, out of the hospital. David said, really? He stole a whole bunch of drugs. You know, what the hell is wrong with you? Really? You proud of him for breaking out of the prison? That's how stupid... <laughs> That's how stupid Jim is. He's a stupid something. So he told him he stole a lot of drugs. He's trying to take him to rehab. And he's like, I'm not going. I'm not going. He said, then you're going to jail. It's either rehab or jail. What you going to do? And and then he's calling him names. And he said, yo, what happened to that? I love you, dad. Why? That little, I love you. I love you, dad. And he said, piss off. I'm not going with you nowhere. I'm not going nowhere. He said, you know what? You're just like your mother. Ah, ah, ah. Sorry, Jim. Why it is nothing, nothing like Catherine. His trifling ass is like you. He is like his father. They nasty to people. They're not nice. They're stuck up. They think it's all about them. I can't stand neither one of them. They got that white privilege thing going. Those two. That's what they got. So anyway, I was laughing at that. I said, really? <laughs> She's like his mother. Come on, Jim. That boy look at stupid just like you and ignorant. Anyway, so why after he's trying to pull him, all of a sudden, why slumps over? He don't want to get up. He slumps over and he's on the floor. And Jim is still holding that arm. I guess that's where he got shot. And he trying to get wide around. But at one point, y'all see he got his hand on the floor, pushing himself up. I was like, I caught that. That was a mistake. If your arm has been, you shouldn't have been able to try to pick push yourself up. But then all of a sudden he did this. You know, and so Leo's like, I don't say I have no pulse. I don't have no pulse. And David comes downstairs talking, what's going on? What's going on? And he calls for Madison. And Madison comes down and try to do CPR and stuff. And he's like, call an ambulance. If he's like, like if he took all that stuff that he stole from the hospital, he's in trouble. Well, what did he steal? A lot of stuff. I don't know what. You got to be more clear. You know, Jim is yelling at Madison. Madison's like, Negro, please. Jim, I'm sitting there going, David just told you he stole all these drugs. And it didn't mean a damn thing to you. You didn't even care. Now, he dying. Now you want to know what he took. He took a lot of stuff. Your son's a druggie. He'll take anything. He'll take Ajax if it, he thought it'd get him high. It is what it is. Anyway, you so proud of him, right? You so proud of that? 
But anyway, they all on the floor. Everybody's standing around. Uh, Leo calls the ambulance, says we got a man in cardiac arrest. And that was it. And how did it end? It ended with Candace and Benny. Candace and Benny are in the room and they're discussing about what that girl said and, and that he has a child, a son, a son at that and stuff. And she said, I told you, you need to be wrapping it up. You up there. He said, she said, what did mama say? Mama said, um, she said, what did mama say, baby daddy? He said, nah, stop that. That ain't funny. That's funny that both of them are pregnant at the same time. I mean, no, he, he just had a baby. She pregnant, but she, he don't know that. Benny don't know that yet. But she called him baby daddy. He didn't like that. And she said, I told you about all them damn random women. You be having sex and not using protection. He said, well, come on. What are you talking about? She said, he said, my game is strong. I carry, you know, I use protection. She said, what, the pull out? That pull out protection ain't working. You know, your game ain't that good or something. He said, you don't know me. She said, I know you. You my brother. I know you. You know, so she said, I told you to be wrapping it up. But he, you know, Benny hard-headed don't listen. They had that episode when they were all saying he was little... Uh, a little dunk dense, you know what they say? One one bulb short, one a pack of <laughs> one sandwich short of a picnic basket or whatever it was, a, a light bulb, sh whatever them sayings are. So anyway, that then they somehow it switched from him using protection to Mitch, and he's like speaking of protection, and he calls Mitch. Mitch don't answer. She's like, let me call, and then she looks at Benny, and then she call. You know, I'm like. If Benny just called, he didn't answer. Like, if he would have answered when you called, that would have been weird. But then, all of a sudden, he gets this call from Sandy. And Sandy's like, yeah, I'm outside. Come outside. See what? And he's like, I ain't know where we at. Mitch told him, it's his brother. Now that's his brother. I'm like, come on. Vinny just said, when he was begging him, he said, I got my nephew here who wants to plead for all these people. I said, so why he had to say, why couldn't he just call him Mitch? Why did Tyler have him call him his nephew? That was weird too, that part. But anyway, so they both call Mitch and leave messages. And Sandy tells him he's outside. And Benny goes and checks the window. Why the window in the bathroom? That was weird. He goes, checks the window and realize, oh my God, mama's house. That's where they think. Because they didn't know that he was at a hotel. So they rush out the door to go save uh, Hannah. And then you see a van slowly drive by, two gunmen with automatic rifles, like <laughs> shooting as they drive by and they shoot up the place. What's gonna end up happening, y'all? Y'all tell me down in the comment section what's gonna end up, who gonna be dead? It ain't gonna be Hannah. It's gonna probably be the girl and the baby. Hannah probably went in the back in the kitchen to get something for the baby. The girl probably was sitting on the couch and got shot up with her and her son. That's my same thinking of it. There's one episode left, and this daggone thing still didn't leave me like, oh my God, who did it? Who got shot? Who's going to kill? Who? I still don't feel that way. It's one episode left. I still don't feel that way. Is something wrong with me? Should I be, should I be concerned that something wrong with me? Y'all tell me in the comment section what y'all feeling, okay? Anyway, this your girl, Bobby J, saying peace.